of the Sefton stronghold for red squirrels. One of 17 strongholds in the north of England. And Formby and the Sefton coast is particularly good because of the conifer woodland that we've got here. Now it's not natural this woodland, it was planted in the late 1800s, the early 1900s by the then estate owners. Nobody's quite sure why, but one of the benefits of it is it's become a really good habitat for red squirrels. So out in the sort of West Lancashire plains that there are here, there's a lot of agricultural land. So there's only sort of small pockets of deciduous woodland. And as the greys have come in, obviously they've inundated those areas and outcompeted the reds. And it's kind of pushed them into this area that we have here. But the conifers are really good for red squirrels. It's their natural habitat, their natural foodstuffs. Greys don't like them quite so much, so it's just a sort of happy coincidence that the two things have combined uh, and it's left this really good sort of red squirrel habitat here at Formby. Grey squirrels originate from North America and were introduced to the UK from the 1870s onwards. Back then, red squirrels were common, with three million still living on our shores by 1950. But their luck ran out as the larger greys were able to outcompete the Reds by eating unripe nuts and berries. More sinister is the squirrel pox virus, which the immune greys carry and can pass on to the Reds. For Red squirrels, the disease nearly always proves fatal. As a consequence of the grey invasion, there are perhaps fewer than 140,000 Red squirrels remaining in the UK with 75% of them being confined to Scotland. Formby is one of England's last strongholds, but even here, until very recently, Reds were on the brink. Kate explains what's being done to help the Reds at Formby. There's various measures taking place here in order to conserve the Red Squirrel population, but what's really important is that we as the National Trust can't work alone. We're only one part of a much bigger Sefton Coast and the woodlands on the Sefton Coast. So it's really important we work in partnership. And we do that here as part of the Merseyside Red Squirrel Project with partners such as Lancashire Wildlife Trust who are probably the major partner here and other sort of local woodland donors, the Sefton Council, various other partners and we all work together under this sort of banner. So there's various measures that take place. Uh, Lancashire Wildlife Trust work with staff and volunteers there to do monitoring. So they do spring and autumn monitoring. They've done that for many years to give us baseline numbers of how the red squirrels are doing in various areas. The other thing that Lancashire Wildlife Trust do is they do grey control. So within what's called the buffer zone, which is an area outside of the stronghold, greys are controlled within that area. The other thing that we do across the coast is we make sure we look after the woodlands here. So that's really, really important. You know, we've got to give the reds a really good habitat to live in. Now, the optimum cone production of the conifers we have here is probably between about 40 and 80 years old. A lot of the trees that are surrounding us here are more likely 100, 150 years old. So they're past their peak. So what we need to do is ensure that within areas of the woodland, we remove the mature trees that are really at the end of their lives and certainly at the end of their cone producing lives and plant new trees in their place to ensure you've got a woodland of different age groups so there's always somewhere for the red squirrels to go where they know there's going to be cones. New research from the University of Liverpool indicates that some of the reds may be fighting back. Blood samples from 10 squirrels contained antibodies that might suggest an emerging resistance to the squirrel pox virus. More research is needed, but this appears to be encouraging news. As for the future, Kate explains the work ahead. I think something we have to consider here, particularly at National Trust at Formby, is as you said before, these woodlands, they're not natural. They were planted. And the one thing that's happening here is that the coastline is actually moving inland at a rate of four metres a year. It's a natural process. But obviously as the dunes move back inland, the woodlands are getting squeezed. So what we need to do here, and what we're working with our partners in the Merseyside Red Squirrel Project, is looking at moving the squirrels out into the wider landscape. I think the future of red squirrels in the UK is good, but obviously there's a lot of factors in there. We need to continue our grey control and step it up in places, but we need to target it. If there's places where reds haven't been for hundreds of years, do we target our effort and put loads of grey control in those areas, despite the fact that reds may never come back in? Or do we really say, look, this is where the reds are, this is where we need to target that grey control? 
Obviously, the other thing we need to work at is squirrel pox virus. We need to know more about this disease, how it moves between animals. Is there any way there is natural immunity in the red population? Is there any way we can introduce a vaccine if there isn't? So there's that important side of it as well. But it does need to be targeted and we do need to work on a number of measures and not just focus on one. There's got to be various things that we do. But I, I'm personally quite positive. I think we can do it. So it's been a bumpy ride, but perhaps the future is looking brighter for these tough little chaps after all.